EVs can be a little bit confusing. There's so much more to learn about them. Everything seems like it should be similar, but also isn't similar at all. I'm Alex Goy, you're watching Driven, and here's everything you need to know about EVs. Let's get the really big, really obvious basic one out of the way first. You can get your EV wet, as demonstrated by this slightly soggy EV. You can drive them in the rain, you can charge them in the rain, you can even wade them through water, though do check manufacturer guidelines on that one depending on your car. But EVs and water, absolutely fine. What about range? How come the range manufacturers give doesn't tend to become reality? Well, that's down to the test. The WLTP, or Worldwide Harmonised Light Duty Vehicles Test Procedure. It's a standardised test designed for global use that puts cars through various controlled scenarios to see how efficient or polluting they are. For EVs, it's how maximum range is measured. The number that comes out of those tests is the number manufacturers have to use. Are those controlled conditions the same as your commute? No! Are they representative of every road network all over the planet? Also, no! But every car is judged by the same metrics, which means while those ranges might be tricky, almost impossible, to achieve, every car should be out by about the same amount, ish. Speaking of range, what sort of things will impact it the most? A few things. The biggest is your driving style. Just like with a petrol car, if you drive flat out everywhere, you'll use more energy or fuel than you would if you were gentle on the controls. You'll notice your driving style influences the predicted range in the dash. Drive like a moron and it'll drop before your very eyes. EVs have a bit of a party piece though. In town, in stop-start traffic, your car can regenerate energy either when you lift off the throttle or when you press the brake pedal. It's not a one-to-one -one energy top-up, but it'll give you a bit of extra go. Same goes for when you drive down a hill. You'll get some battery back. Where you drive will also have an impact on your range. For example, driving up a hill, you need to move a heavy thing up. That's going to use electricity, but you do get a little bit of your range back going down the other side. Not one-to-one, -one, but you'll still get a bit back. You don't necessarily get that in a petrol car. You don't regrow petrol in the tank, do you? Also, the motorway, that can be a range sapper. I mean, think about it. You're asking your car to drive 70 miles an hour for hours at a time. That's gonna use lots of energy, but also the faster you go, the harder your car has to push through the air. That uses energy. You need forward momentum to do it. But if you drop a few miles an hour on the motorway, say do 65 rather than 70, you'll use less energy and have more range. What about the weather? Well, according to charge specialists GridServe, if your aircon's on max in the sun, you'll use about seven miles per hour of range, which isn't the end of the world. In the winter, you'll notice a drop. Yes, the heater will use some energy, but you can take the edge off that by specking a heat pump, which takes air from outside, mixes it with warm air from electrical systems and compresses it to make more heat to lob into the cabin. But lower temperatures mean your battery has to work harder. Why? Well, it's about chemistry. See, batteries have an optimum operating temperature, 20, 25 degrees-ish, depending on your manufacturer. When it's warm out, there are often cooling systems to keep your battery in check. But in the cold, that's a different story altogether. When the mercury dips, the chemical reaction that happens inside the cells happens more slowly, often cutting range quite dramatically. Now, if you're the sort of EV driver that'll just pot around town and you have a charge point at home, it's not really going to be a problem, but if you're doing big miles, you will see a dip in your range. That is normal. Speaking of range, it's probably not a good idea to think solely in max mileage terms. It's better to think of efficiency. Here's some theory. Two cars boast a max range of 300 miles. One has a 50 kilowatt hour battery, the other a 100 kilowatt hour battery. If you look at them purely for how far they can go, you'll think they're the same, but actually, the smaller battery car is smarter. To make it make sense, please enjoy this maths with a small explanation. We talk about efficiency in internal combustion engine cars as MPG, miles per gallon, but we don't really talk about the fuel tank. But in an EV, if you think of a, say, 100 kilowatt hour battery, that has 100 units of fuel within it. We do talk about it 
as the fuel tank. Now if your 100 kilowatt hour battery can get you 300 miles, that means you can do three miles per unit of fuel or three miles per kilowatt hour. That's our efficiency gauge. The 50 kilowatt hour car can do twice that, six miles per kilowatt hour, which means our smaller car is more efficient. Now, there'll be factors when it comes to efficiency. A big luxury car like a posh SUV or saloon will be bigger, heavier and have more stuff inside and will need a big battery. A tiny hatch won't have as much space or as many fancy toys, so it won't need a big old slab to go far. What about charging? Well, you might hear that certain EVs can take 50, 100, 150, 300 kilowatt, whatever, chargers. But how much your vehicle can take? It's sort of complicated, but it's sort of not. It's all down to the innards of your car, what it can physically do. Expensive cars can take faster chargers. Not so expensive cars, not so fast charge. But you can plug your EV into any charger that you want. A wall box at home, one of the big fancy forecourts, something on the side of the street. But how much charge your car can take is dictated by your innards, your architecture. So even if you plug your car that could take, say, a maximum 100 kilowatts of charge, into a 350 kilowatt rapid charger. The car would talk to the charger, the charger would talk to the car, and then you will only get 100 kilowatts of charge because that's all your car can handle. Think of it like filling up a water bottle with a fire hose. It's all the nozzle can take. When it comes to charge speeds, if you have a home charger and only really use your car to do things around town, the ability to fast charge isn't really essential. You can plug your car in at night and wake up to a full battery. If you're on the road a lot or don't have a charger at home, having a car that can use faster chargers can be handy, but rapid chargers in the wild can be expensive. You might have noticed that manufacturers quote their fast charge times as 10 to 80%, and there's a reason for that. Battery safety, battery health. You might have spotted your phone does this as well. You'll go up to 80% and it'll slowly charge to go up to 100. It's the same principle. It keeps the battery healthier and safer for longer. There's one more thing you need to be aware of, the cost of charging. Public fast chargers are expensive. I've paid 60, 79 pence per kilowatt in the wild before. If you only have public charging at hand, there is a price to pay. If you have a plug at home, you can get a much cheaper rate to charge your motor. Oh, and one more thing, fires. Between 2010 and 2024, there were 511 verified high voltage battery fires. And recent research says there's a 0.0012% chance of an EV fire compared to 0.1% in an internal combustion engine vehicle. So if anyone does say your new EV might go pop, you have numbers to back it up. Their petrol car's more likely to go than yours. And there you have it, EV101. For some people, all this is second nature, but it's completely understandable to have questions. Hopefully, this film has helped you answer some of them. This is, of course, top level stuff. You can go a lot deeper if you want to. But if you're just dipping your toe in the water, hopefully, we've helped. If you're looking at getting an EV, they can work for almost everybody, and they are terribly relaxing. If you're going for it, Happy driving.